The 14900K has been running hot and crashing games. After weeks of silence, Intel finally released the fix, but will these new settings kill your performance? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the UPC FC series, we've been helping you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on the two best gaming CPUs with the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D in the red corner, taking on the Intel Core i9-14900K in the blue corner. However, unlike other 14900K reviews, I'll be using the latest official Intel default settings with the Extreme Power Delivery Profile active. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 17 games, I will also demystify the new Intel default settings, and if you stick around, I will share with you a simple BIOS fix to help you recapture the lost performance caused by these new settings. It's really not rocket science, so before the main event gets started, let's jump straight into the issues that have been plaguing high-end Intel CPUs. In early April 2024, a report from ZDNet Korea shed light on an extremely high number of customer returns of Intel 13th and 14th gen Core i9 CPUs. According to the report, gamers playing Tekken 8 with a 13900 or 14900K were being presented with an error message stating not enough video memory when launching the game, forcing it to close. This is obviously not good, but it isn't a new problem, with customer reviews of the 14900K citing crashes in games after a few months of owning the CPU. The problems appear to focus on Unreal Engine games, with reports of issues in Hogwarts Legacy, Lies of P, and the Callisto Protocol, to name a few. In most cases, the game will report an error that it's out of video memory memory before crashing. As the issues became more widespread and without any official guidance from Intel, Nvidia was forced to respond and place the blame squarely on Intel. Meanwhile, motherboard companies such as Asus, ASRock, and Gigabyte have been working with Intel and decided to release BIOS updates with a new Intel baseline option. Their intent was to rapidly resolve the stability issues by ensuring the chips would run at lower frequencies and thermal parameters, but with the obvious side effect of lowering performance. Intel, concerned that this drop in performance would open them up to false advertising claims, decided to finally release an official statement on May 8th, telling customers and partners not to use these baseline settings, but instead to use new Intel default settings. Here is the Intel statement which I will read for context. Several motherboard manufacturers have released BIOS profiles labeled Intel Baseline Profile. However, these BIOS profiles are not the same as the Intel default settings recommendations that Intel has recently shared with its partners regarding the instability issues reported on 13th and 14th Gen K SKU processors. These Intel baseline profile BIOS settings appear to be based on power delivery guidance previously provided by Intel to manufacturers that describes the various power delivery options for 13th and 14th generation K SKU processors based on motherboard capabilities. Intel is not recommending motherboard manufacturers to use baseline power delivery settings on boards capable of higher values. Intel's recommended Intel default settings are a combination of thermal and power delivery features along with the selection of possible power delivery profiles based on motherboard capabilities. Intel recommends customers to implement the highest power delivery profile compatible with each individual motherboard design as noted in the table below. This is the table that Intel references. In typical Intel fashion, it's somewhat confusing to look at, so let's run through it briefly. The first set of parameters at the top of the table are switches that are relatively easy to turn on and off in BIOS. If you happen to have an ASUS motherboard, then you can simply go to ASUS Multicore Enhancement and select Disabled Enforce All Limits. Other motherboard manufacturers will have similar options available in BIOS. You should, of course, go through your BIOS settings and make sure that the parameters are set per the Intel guidance, but most now should be. Then it's simply comes down to changing a few primary parameters in BIOS depending on what Intel i9 processor you have. These parameters are ICC Max, PL1 and PL2, where ICC Max defines the maximum current that the CPU can draw under load, PL1 defines the long-term maximum power draw, and PL2 defines the short-term maximum power draw. So if PL2 is higher than PL1, then we'll allow the CPU to boost the higher frequencies for short periods of time. Intel has requested that motherboard manufacturers implement these Intel default settings as the new BIOS default profile by May 31st, 2024. So a few tweaks and the instability issues go away. But I'm sure many of you are asking, what do these new settings do to performance? 
In order to understand the impact on performance, I tested multiple power profiles in BIOS with Cinebench R24 and 3D Mark Times by Xtreme. These tests were conducted on my Intel test bench that has an ASUS ROG Strix Z790E gaming Wi-Fi 2 motherboard with BIOS version 1202 installed and XMP1 turned on. The first profile I tested was for the current baseline that you get when you leave all BIOS options set to auto. This is the default behavior that you get when you use an ASUS motherboard and it's what most reviewers use when they benchmark 13900 k and 14900k processors. I then ran the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility Speed Optimizer tool to see if that resulted in a performance boost. Surprisingly, it actually hurt performance a little, so I wouldn't recommend using that. I then proceeded to run the Intel Baseline Profile that ASUS recently released for their Z790 motherboards in response to the Intel stability issues, which resulted in a relatively large decrease in performance. This is the same profile that Hardware Unbox used in their recent video, but as you can see, it's not equivalent to the Intel Extreme Extreme profile as they incorrectly stated in their video. I followed up on these benchmarks by testing the three Intel power delivery profiles called Baseline, Performance, and Extreme. As you can see, both the Baseline and Performance profiles result in a significant decrease in performance. In Cinebench, over 20% decrease. The Extreme profile fixes that somewhat, but you will still lose around 5% in Cinebench compared to Intel's marketing material. What's also interesting is that the CPU package temperature with 3D Mark Times by Extreme actually hits the thermal limit of 100 degrees Celsius, which is eight degrees higher than the original default ASUS profile. Put mildly, these results are extremely disappointing. Having performance taken away from you by the manufacturer after purchasing your product is completely unacceptable. So what can you do to try to recapture this lost performance? Stick around until after the main battle to find out. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D in the red corner, taking on the Intel Core i9-14900K in the blue corner. The test systems being used to run the benchmarks are my AMD and Intel open bench tables with the following components. For the AMD test platform, for the motherboard, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For the RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB 32GB of DDR5 6000 at CL30. For the GPU, we have a Zotac GeForce RTX 4090 Amp Extreme Aero. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Gigabyte GP AP 1200PM 1200W Platinum Power Supply. For the Intel test platform, for the motherboard we have an ASUS ROG Strix Z790E Gaming Wi-Fi 2. For RAM we have Team T-Force Delta RGB 32GB of DDR5 7200 at CL34. For the GPU we have a Zotac GeForce RTX 4090 Amp Extreme Aero. For the CPU cooler we have an ASUS ROG Ryzen 2 360mm AIO. For storage we have a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU we have an EVGA Supernova 1200P2 1200W Platinum Power Supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with an RTX 4090 at default clocks. The memory for the 7800X3D was set to Expo, while the memory for the 14900K was set to XMP. For the Intel system, I conducted all testing using Intel default settings with the Extreme Power Delivery Profile, per the new Intel guidance. To remove bias from the benchmarks, it's important to test both systems at their optimum memory conditions. For AMD AM5 systems, this means testing at 6000 mega transfers per second at CL30. Based on my prior testing, I found that performance for the 7800X3D does not scale well with increased memory speeds due primarily to limitations with the Infinity fabric. For Intel LGA 1700 systems, performance does scale with memory speed. However, memory stability becomes an issue at higher speeds, especially with four DIMM motherboards, and is highly dependent on the quality of the CPU Integrated Memory Controller, or IMC. So to avoid producing results that only a handful of lucky users will be able to achieve, I selected a memory speed of 7200 mega transfers per second at CL34. In order to thoroughly test each processor, I ran the benchmarks at different game settings in addition to different resolutions. To place maximum load on the CPU, I tested at 1080p with low settings, which should allow me to extract max performance from each chip. To create a more balanced CPU-GPU load, I tested at 1440p with medium settings. And to see if each CPU had an impact on GPU performance, I tested at 4K with ultra settings. These resolution setting combinations align well with typical gamer selections. With 1440p medium settings, 
settings reflecting what most online first-person shooter gamers would likely use to achieve maximum frame rates, whereas 4K Ultra settings reflect what most single-player gamers would do with a high-end CPU-GPU combination to extract maximum quality. With the test systems ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. But before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now it's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy! In the blue corner, we have the champion! In the red corner, we have the challenger! Who will win this battle royale? Stay tuned to find out! As I mentioned earlier in the video, the new Intel default settings result in a relatively significant loss in performance. If you use the performance profile, then you're looking at a greater than 20% reduction in Cinebench score. If you use the extreme profile, then you're looking at a 5% reduction. Either way, you lose performance. Having performance taken away from you after purchasing a product is, in my opinion, completely unacceptable, as I mentioned earlier. So what can you do to try to recapture this lost performance? From all of the testing that I conducted for this video, there was one very simple BIOS option that not only allows you to recapture the original performance, but does so while significantly improving temperatures. For ASUS motherboard owners, this simple option is located under ASUS multi-core enhancement and is called Enabled Remove All Limits 90 Degrees Celsius. All this does is allow the motherboard to push the CPU until it hits a maximum package temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. Your results will obviously vary based on silicon quality and cooler performance, but for my test bench with the 360 degree AIO, I was able to get a slight increase in scores while dropping temperatures by 8 degrees in Cinebench and 3 degrees in Time Spy when compared with the original baseline. Given that this option essentially maintains the original performance, it's a much more attractive alternative to the extreme profile proposed by 
by Intel, and it even drops the CPU package temperature in TimeSpy by a whopping 11 degrees Celsius relative to the extreme profile while delivering better performance. I even tested this profile extensively in Hogwarts Legacy, and I didn't have any issues. As a result, this is the option that I plan to use for my Intel-based system moving forward, even when the new Intel profiles are released. And that's it, a very simple way to improve system stability while maintaining performance. As you can see, it's really not rocket science. In this video, we pitted the two top gaming CPUs against each other in the PC Octagon to see who will emerge victorious. With the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D in the red corner, taking on the Intel Core i9-14900K in the blue corner. Somewhat unexpectedly, the round-by-round -round results show a clear victory for the 7800X3D, with nine victories, five losses, and three draws across 17 hard-fought rounds. The extra cores of the 14900K do help it in applications such as Blender, but when you you look the average gaming performance across 16 games, especially the 1% lows, it's clear that the 7800X3D is a better choice for gamers, with performance advantages of over 10%. This is further supported by looking at power efficiency, with the 7800X3D achieving its performance at roughly half the power draw of the 14900K and at much lower temperatures. It's truly impressive just how far AMD has progressed with their CPU designs relative to Intel since the introduction of Ryzen. Given that the 7800X3D has a significant advantage in gaming performance, what happens when we look at cost? The 14900K is a whopping $177 or 48% more expensive than the 7800X3D at the time of filming this video. If you convert that into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar at 1080p, then it's not even close. With the 7800X3D providing a knockout blow by offering significantly more value than the 14900K. While it's clear that the new Intel default settings are hurting performance, even with the extreme power delivery profile. What AMD did with the 7800X3D is produce an amazing gaming chip at an equally amazing price. It's truly fantastic to see this level of price to performance, and it really should be another wake-up call to Intel. They no longer have the best chips and really need to adjust their pricing accordingly. The bottom line is Intel tried to blame motherboard manufacturers for their recent instability issues, but the reality is they've been pushing their CPUs too much in an effort to beat AMD. This should be a lesson for Intel. If you keep pushing frequencies without any concern for power or temperature, then it will eventually catch up with you. That said, if you're a gamer and want the best, then look no further than the 7800X3D. It offers outstanding performance at an equally great price. If you have a 14900K, my strong recommendation is to set a 90 degrees Celsius thermal limit for daily operation while you wait for the new Extreme Profile to be made available in BIOS. And even then you will have to decide if the reduction in performance is acceptable. To many gamers, it simply won't be. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video and the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. Please also comment and offer suggestions on any future components that you would like to see go head to head. Bye for now.